Here in America, we say, call a spade a spade. We tell children to look their parents directly in the eye when they speak. If someone doesn't look at you in the eye, you think that they're shifty. Maybe they're not trustworthy. But not all cultures are that way. Um, in India, direct communication, as this method of communication is called, is sometimes considered impolite. And indirect communication is the norm. So just recently, I had a couple of experiences uh, of indirect communication. This morning, I received an updated quote from one of our vendors that I was working with uh, in, in the process of helping a client. And we had asked this vendor to update their price quote because we wanted to, them to do some additional work. We didn't say um, exactly what they should charge us. And we got a quote back from them that essentially said that they would do half the work that we had asked for. Um, now, they didn't explain why, they didn't mention the price. And so now as the India expert, I had to tell my client that this could mean one of three things. It could mean that they didn't have the capacity to do as much work as we asked, and but they didn't want to say that. It could mean that uh, perhaps as researchers and scientists, they thought that this much repetitive work might be boring and they chose not to do it. Or it could mean that they just assumed that we wanted twice the work for the same price. They didn't say which of these reasons uh, had led them to do what they did. Uh, and this kind of uh, communication often causes great concern in the United States because people think that the Indian partner is either incompetent or uncaring or didn't listen. None of those are true. What you have to do is to be able to read between the lines and then go back and ask the right question of the vendor so that they can provide additional information. This can also be true in a sales situation or any business situation. You ask a question and you get an answer that doesn't appear to be complete and then you might make an assumption that actually leads you to the wrong path. As it turned out in this particular case, we talked to the vendor and they said, no, we are confident that we can do everything you need and want for half the effort. So don't take the additional time. Don't pay us any more money and uh, we will deliver you the same quality that you otherwise expected. I'll give you another example. I was in India with my colleague Rajneesh and we were waiting for a call from an important business partner. Uh, that uh, we had been waiting a couple of days for and uh, I was in the car with him driving to another location. I said, why don't we reach out to him? And we called both of us on the phone. Again, he, the phone rang, he didn't pick up and I turned to Rajneesh and I said, oh, perhaps, you know, he's in a situation where he can't answer the phone. You know, that's a reasonable assumption for an American and even though I'm the India expert, you know, I made that assumption and Rajneesh smiled and turned to me and said, Hey Gunjan, it's probably also possible that he is not ready to talk to us. That there's some piece of information, something else that he is waiting for and that's why he's not picking up my phone. Uh, not something that I would have thought of right away, but again, this is a form of indirect communication where not answering the phone is a message that the vendor was conveying to us. So keep in mind that when you deal with India, these forms of indirect communication are mainstream, they're important, they happen every day, and sometimes they happen and you don't even know it or realize it. Uh, and I, as the India expert, mixed this, this one. My colleague had to explain it to me. So be watchful and you'll be smart, be humble, and you will do much better in communicating with India.